Okay. So okay. the topic that we are going to present today is seizures. So it will be presented by me, my friend Chenny and Hui. Sure. So the uh, intro will be the seizure definition is a transient occurrence of sign and symptoms due to an abnormal, excessive or synchronous neuronal activity in the brain. And the definition for epilepsy is a chronic neurologic disorder manifesting by repeated epileptic seizures, which is also known as attack of fits, when the neurons send abnormal electrochemical signal to the brain causing a seizure. Okay, uh, let's just uh, stop there. So, are you guys clear on the definition? Okay, seizure or it's just one thing lah. Seizure doesn't equals to epilepsy. It doesn't mean that anyone who present with seizure yeah. is having epilepsy. Yeah. Seizure is seizure lah. Seizure is actually a symptoms. A symptom ah. Patient may present to you with a seizure, but that doesn't mean that they are the epilepsy. Epilepsy is a seizure yang recurrent. They chronic. A patient who presented dengan episodes of seizure because seizure on its own have causes lah and it can be acute and some people can just uh, have a seizure once ever in their life lah nah? so you need to be clear about the definition of seizure versus epilepsy lah okay carry on carry on uh, so the stages of the seizure will be three stages, which is aura stage, where the person will, may have hallucination, confusion, feeling dizzy or numbness, or even distorted emotion. And the second will be the aura stage, where the patient will have tonic stage and also the clonic stage. And the last one is the post stage. Okay, so on this slide, this is, this is, this is a fairly good representation. Lah. Tapi what you need to be aware of, not all seizure will have will go through all this stage. And then not all seizure will, will have tonic or clonic component. Tapi what aura pun sama. Seizure pun tak, not all seizures ada aura. This is sort of a classic description of seizure lah. Okay, so aura ni can be anything from smelling something weird, seeing things or become emotionally labile sometimes a patient with epilepsy you know they they will have some sense when they about to have a seizure that's aura lah. be it you know feeling dizzy uh smelling something weird or seeing flashes of lights that's aura lah. it's much of a, a warning for you know before a seizure then you got your classic tonic clonic punya seizure lah in which patient will fall on the floor have the jerky movement so but then you need to realize not all seizure will have tonic or clonic stage you get seizures in that trick yang macam absent seizure where there's no tonic or clonic movement patient just you know black stare for a while okay and then typically following a seizure patient will have post-ictal stage lah where they usually they become very exhausted and sleepy lah but sometimes uh, post-ictal stage also can present sometimes uh, a patient during post-ictal stage can be psychotic okay so post-ictal normally is when patient become exhausted or sleepy but there will be some cases where during the post-ictal stage patient become psychotic and also uh, with regards to tapi this is a typical description of a tonic clonic seizure lah okay carry on so the trigger factor for a seizure will be sleep deprivation missed doses of anti-epileptic drugs in the treated patients alcohol recreational drug misuse physical and mental exhaustion, flickering lights including TV and computer screens, intercurrent infections and metabolic disturbances, and the uncommon ones... Which one do you think is the most common? Um, sleep deprivation or alcohol? No. The most common is misdose. Oh. I mean, you guys haven't worked in a hospital yet, right? 
later when you start working you will realize that all the breakthrough seizures is because patient missed their dose of medication lah either intentionally or unintentionally but it's mostly related to their missing their drugs however uh, this is not an exhaustive list of why patient have seizures tapi any form of stress is as in you know infection emotional stress just general exhaustion i mean patient's been working too hard you know haven't been sleeping for a while and just just their, their body is just exhausted also can trigger seizure okay and of course the flick, flick, flickering lights apa semua ni uh, can also uh, trigger seizures lah you guys probably would remember lah you, you guys know pokemon right yes yes don't, don't be afraid to admit lah but hopefully you guys know pokemon lah because i i, I hope it's not it's not beyond your uh, generation when i was younger pokemon was almost banned down all over the world because the original pokemon series had a lot of you know pikachu have you know they uh, 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 dia punya power electricity kan in the opening scenes tu dia punya power tu cause uh, flickering punya light dekat tv and cause a lot of children to have seizures dekat america and they almost banned for pokemon for that lah so and that's one of the reason why pokemon become very famous you know this was in the 90s lah so uh, yeah but of course flickering lights especially those who, who go to LAN parties who play a lot of video games that's why you notice kan a lot of video games if you guys play video games they have a warning you know there's flickering light may induce seizure and what not Okay, so it, it, it's uh, well known, especially in children, lah. if they've been staring at video games or TV for a long time, they might, de- uh, they might, have, they might develop seizures. Okay. okay, okay, carry on. So the pathophysiology will be uh, the normal function of brain, it will maintain a continuous balance between the excitation and the inhibition, remaining responsive to the environment while avoid the continuing unrestrained spontaneous activity. So the inhibitory transmitter GABA is particularly important, acting on the ion channel to enhance the chloride inflow and reduce the chances of action potential formation, whereas the excitatory amino acids, which is the glutamate and aspartate, it will allow the influx of sodium and calcium, producing the opposite effect. So the many seizures will result from an imbalance between this excitation and inhibition. So what do you understand from what you just read just now? Sounds very complicated, eh? um, So basically, our brain, they are the uh, excitation and inhibition. And to maintain normal punya excitation, in, you know, excitation and inhibition lah, whether the impulse, apa semua. In order for you to maintain normal function, there's a balance lah between excitation and inhibition. Seizures happens when the balance is broken lah. It's as simple as that. When there's abnormal excitation, then you get seizures lah. Tu je. I mean, you probably need to know in a bit more detail for your exam. Tapi for purpose of, say, practical purposes for, you know, work, you just need to know that when there's a seizure, there's imbalance of the excitation and inhibition signals in the brain. You know, your brain become overly excited, excited and that's why you have seizure because you know normally if you your brain under excitation under some inhibition to to make sure that you know not every part of your body become excited again when that's imbalance the whole brain become excited then everything become excited lah jerky movements of the hands you know your tonic your clonic and everything happens lah in an uncontrolled manner okay so basically that's a seizure lah okay carry on Uh, the classification of the seizures will be generalized seizures, focal seizures, and the unknown. And under the generalized, it will be tonic-clonic and the absence seizure or the myoclonic absence, eyelid myoclonia, myoclonic, clonic, 
tonic and atonic. And then under the focal seizures, it will be uh, without the impairment of consciousness or awareness, it will be focal motor or focal sensory. And with impairment of consciousness or awareness, it is also known as the complex partial or evolving to a bilateral convulsive seizure. And the other one will be the epileptic spasms. Okay. And this... Uh -huh. okay, and then this picture just shows that uh, the focal seizures, where it originates from a source and then uh, yeah, discharge in a focal area of the cerebral cortex. And then for the generalized, it will uh, spread to the other part. Okay, so what you need to understand, uh, there's general seizure, focal seizures. The difference between, the, the most obvious difference between Generalized seizures and focal seizures is conscious level. With generalized seizure, patient will lose consciousness. This is the classic seizure where patient might be talking to you, stand up, then suddenly fall on the ground and start seizure lah. Focal seizure is when sometimes patient is did not did not lose consciousness, but suddenly one of the arms start jerking or part of the face start twitching or one of the legs start having seizures lah. Okay. Focal seizures may just be focal seizures. But it can proceed to generalization. Maksudnya, it start with the focal seizure and then it become sec dia ada yang ni lah, cakap secondary generalization. Dia mula-mula start dengan focal seizure and then after a few minutes, it become you know, patient fell on the floor and become generalized seizure lah. Okay, but some some patient may just have focal seizures. So, uh, what the 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 what why 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 is this important? The management of a generalized seizure and focal seizure is different. Usually, focal seizures are not as dramatic and not as dangerous. We'll, we'll talk about why general seizure is more dangerous later lah. I'm sure you've got some about it somewhere in the slides. But focal seizure is not as urgent as general seizure. Okay, carry on. So we will be uh, continuing to the focal seizures mm. and first one will be the simple partial. Uh, they are caused by the localized cortical activity with retained awareness where the consciousness is preserved. And then during the attack, it might show focal twitching of extremity or speech arrest or special visual sensations or feeling of fear or doom. And there is no post ictal state. And in the complex partial, the awareness will become impaired. The patient is unconscious and it, as it spreads to the temporal lobes, which is also known as the temporal lobe seizure. The patients will stop and stare blankly, often blinking repetitively, making smacking movements of their lips or displaying other automatisms, such as picking at their clothes. And then after a few minutes, the consciousness returns, but the patient may be muddled and feel drowsy for a period for up to an hour. And this is the post ictal state. And then uh, this is the causes of the focal seizures. Yeah, this one you may want to have a few lah for your exam purposes. There's, I mean, the causes, there's loads lah. Most of them, causes are idiopathic or unknown. Tapi if you, you know, if your exam asks you a few causes, just try to remember lah a few. Okay. Carry on. Uh, I'm Trini and I'll continue the present presentation. Okay. Uh, so, I'll talk about the tonic-clonic seizures. It's an initial aura that may be experienced by the patient, depending on the cortical area from which the seizure originates. The patient then becomes rigid, which we also call it as tonic and unconscious, uh, falling heavily if standing and risking facial injury. During this phase, breathing stops and central cyanosis may occur. And as cortical discharges reduce in frequency, jerking, which we also call as clonic, 
uh, movement emerge for two minutes at most. Afterwards, there is a flaccid state of deep coma, which can persist for some minutes and on regaining awareness, the patient may be confused, disorientated or amnestic. Uh, amnestic. Then, during the attack, urinary incontinence and tongue biting may occur. Subsequently, the patient usually feels unwell and sleepy with headache and myalgia. And uh, the right side uh, is the causes of generalized tonic clonic seizures. Just, just as before, lah, there's so many causes, but most of the time, in the majority of cases, tonic clonic seizures, uh, especially yang related to epilepsy, the cause are idiopathic. Lah. It's unknown. Some people are just born with it. Lah. Okay. These are the least uh, sort of uh, things that may trigger or may cause seizure. Lah, but it's not exhaustive. Lah. It, it, you know, basically anything can cause a seizure. Lah. Okay. Carry on. <clears throat> Uh, then, uh, absence seizures, which we call, we also call it as petit mal, always start in childhood. These are non-convulsive, no aura, and no post symptoms. They can occur so frequently, which is 20 to 30 times a day, often last only a few seconds. And the patient shows uh, suddenly loss consciousness without losing postural tone and appear confused, detached, or withdrawn. An absence seizure typically ends abruptly with a return to normal functioning. Okay, this is a type of seizure that, uh, like it said, start in childhood. Very, 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 very rarely lah, you get adults with absent seizures. This is usually very exclusively childhood yeah, seizures. This is the sort of seizures where, you know, the person might be doing something, then suddenly absent. For 30 seconds then continue doing what they were doing without realizing that they they they've, they've, they've stopped lah. it's usually very apparent to a witness but not to the person because they they will never remember but it's a childhood thing very rarely lah you diagnose absent seizure in a previously undiagnosed adult Okay, it's more, it's fairly exclusive to pediatric lah. Okay, carry on. Then for myoclonic seizure, these are typically brief, jerking movements predominating in the arms. In epilepsy, they are more marked in the morning or on awakening from sleep and tend to be provoked by fatigue, alcohol or sleep deprivation. For the atonic seizure, these are the seizures uh, involving brief loss of muscle tone, usually resulting in heavy falls with or without loss of consciousness. Then for the tonic seizure, these are associated with a generalized increase in tone and an associated loss of awareness. They are usually seen as part of an epilepsy syndrome and are unlikely to be isolated. And for the chronic seizure, uh, these are similar to tonic chronic seizures. The clinical manifestations are similar, but there is no preceding tonic phase. Then next, I'll okay, okay. talk before about... We go, before we go to status epilepticus, what do you realize about all the classification of seizures? You know, we got so many classification, can one... 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, F, whatever, again. Anyone? Okay. The uh, only relevant, clinically, lah. Clinically, unless you decide to become a pediatric neurologist, uh, ke, or a neurologist, ke apa, Clinically, the practical seizure punya classification is generalized seizure dengan focal seizure je. The rest is macam a subdivision of seizure, seizure, seizure which 
may be of interest if you're a neurologist tapi in terms of management it's the same say for emergency you really only concern about uh generalized seizure generalized whether it's tonic clonic or clonic ke, or just tonic ke, tapi the general seizure is the one that's macam kita kata emergency lah because the uh, potential life threatening punya issues the rest are usually managed as outpatient all your focal seizure your absent seizure your myoclonic seizure it's all outpatient management the ones that you you know you need to pay attention or need to deal with urgently is usually the generalized seizure okay all this classification is good if you're really you know into the seizure specialty lah you know, if you really want to study your seizure but for practical purposes it's okay lah okay for practical purposes it, it, it doesn't have much clinical relevance except for when you're deciding what drugs you want to start over a long period of time and whatever whatever but for emergency sort of purposes what you really need to be concerned about is the tonic clonic seizure the generalized seizures because that one can have uh, immediate life threatening issues okay carry on mana pergi status epilepticus tadi okay uh, so next we'll talk about the state status epilepticus it is defined as a single seizure lasting for longer than five minutes or as two or more seizures that occur sequentially without an intervening recovery of consciousness. Okay, so where did you get this definition from? Textbook of the... Uh -huh. Which textbook? Oh, where are... Uh, this textbook. Tintinali, yeah? Is it yeah. Tintinali or Davidson? Uh, Tintinali. Tintinali, okay. So... Uh, okay, uh, the classic description, the, the classic definition of a status epilepticus is a seizure that goes on for more than 30 minutes without stopping. You know, a patient who had a seizure for more than 30 minutes is defined as having status epilepticus. Or, like the second part too, having two or more seizures without regaining consciousness in between seizure two minutes postictal then another seizure postictal then another seizure that's status epilepticus tapi you know what do you uh, can you macam find can you what do you think is weird about the old definition anyone uh, ada orang ke what about the old definition what's weird about it uh, hello Mm, not sure, doctor. Okay. Sorry. Um, the old definition say uh, that you can only you, you diagnose the epilepticus when somebody is having seizure for more than thirty minutes. So, which would be very weird, lah. You know, somebody has a seizure in front of you. You not tunggu thirty minutes, ke? No, thirty minutes. Tengok orang tu having seizure and not do anything. So that's why. The definition too is always like the old definition is more like like oh yeah you because you never let a patient seize for more than for up to thirty minutes without doing anything. That's the issue. Like oh, takkan you nak tunggu thirty minutes? Only then baru you start giving treatment for you to diagnose status epilepticus. So after what people realize lah that definition too much like play escape. What, but what, what, what people start to realize is usually a seizure won't go on for more than a few minutes. Usually if a seizure continuous become, I mean the seizure continues for more than five minutes, the likelihood that it's probably going to go on longer. Lah. That's why the, the new definition pakai five minutes. Tapi it's... You, I'm not sure whether this is a worldwide accepted definition. As far as I know, they still use the 30 minutes punya definition. It's just that if the seizure goes on for more than 5 minutes, 
you treat that patient as status epilepticus anyway. You label that patient as having status epilepticus rather than still wait for the rest of the 30 minutes before labeling them as status epilepticus. But the definition of a seizure that continuously goes on for more than 30 minutes still valid. It's just that the new definition in terms of for management purposes if the seizure lasts longer more lasts longer than five minutes you label the patient as having status epilepticus okay uh i'm not sure why you put non-convulsive status epilepticus i mean non-convulsive status epilepticus ni is something that's satu rare yang kedua it's not easily diagnosed because the patient with non-convulsive status epilepticus may present to you with unconsciousness uh, and and <clears throat> unconsciousness as if they are sleeping lah. So and it's not easily it's not it's 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 difficult to diagnose without an EEG. And EEG is not something that you can just Hi, misi tolong buat EEG satu It's not something that's available in I think most EDs pun tak ada EEG ni EEG ni is only ada in neuro, neuro neurological clinic Or something like that, you know Because doing the EEG is one thing Interpreting the EEG is another thing So it's not, it's not Something yang you would, uh, it's not a diagnosis that you make very often lah. But you should have, uh, but if you're sort of in an emergency setting or whatnot, sometimes you may need, you may suspect non-convulsive status epilepticus if you've got a patient with, uh, an unconscious patient that doesn't respond to normal punya treatment lah, okay? Carry on. In so next, I'll talk about the investigation of epilepsy. So, uh, uh, just just wondering, have you guys ever even seen an EEG? <laughs> Any one of you, have you ever seen an EEG? Being done or the EEG punya strip ke apa ke? No. No, right. Um, this one, I suppose, um, hafal je lah. Because sometimes your MCQ, dia akan tanya lah. Juvenile myoclonic seizure, epilepsy, what? Are the ECG, EEG changes, tonic clonic? What are the EEG changes? This one hafal lah. I doubt any of uh, anyone really outside of neurology neurology would have seen EEG that often lah. This one you just hafal for your MCQ ke apa lah. Because you can say lah, poly spike and wave, poly spike and wave, spike and wave. EEG pun tak pernah tengok. If they were to show you the EEG pun, you don't know mana spike, mana wave. Kan? So, don't worry about this too much lah. Kalau hafal, hafal for your exam je lah. Okay? But you know how EEG looks like, right? It's the test where they put all the sticky thing over your head and connect you to a machine macam ECG punya machine and some, some things come out lah. Some spiky spiky waves come out lah. On the paper. Okay. Carry on. Hmm. Uh, good morning. Doc hey, good afternoon, doctor. Okay. So, I will continue with the morning, management. <laughs> During an active seizure, take measure to protect the patient from injury or aspirations. Intravenous anticonvulsants are often not needed. Uh, during an uncomplicated seizures that resolve spontaneously. In patients with a known seizure disorders who anticonvulsant levels are low or who have missed doses of prescribed medications, supplemental doses may be appropriate. 
or oral loadings of phenytons, 20 mg per kg, divided into three doses given every two to four hours, is time consuming and results in a delay in reaching therapeutic levels. Alternately, phenytons, uh, 20 mg per 20 mg per kg intravenous may be an administrated at the rate of 25 mg per minute. The loading dose of false phenytons is uh, 20 PE per kg at a maximum intravenous rate of 150 PE per minute. Okay, so management, eh? Okay, this is why uh, because you you guys are emergency when you're posting, eh? So, so of course, we're going to talk about emergency. Lah. So, this is one of the reasons why I said for our sort of emergency purposes we're not really concerned about other type of seizure because they all manage the outpatient and we don't care about outpatients okay so for emergency purposes we're concerned about uh generalized seizure the tonic clonic seizure the seizure that patient falls and then start twitching and whatnot so the issue with uh, tonic clonic seizure ni, <clears throat> The biggest concern about the tonic clonic seizure ni, it's not the seizure. We don't really care about the jerky movement, the tonic movement. It's not that's that's not gonna kill the patient. Okay, what's gonna kill the patient is during a seizure. I think one of your friend mentioned again, during a seizure, patient stop breathing, and patient may foam at the mouth and patient is unconscious so these are a very uh, dangerous combination stop breathing if you stop breathing for too long your brain going to be deprived of oxygen and you know may, patient may end up with brain damage or death foaming at the mouth and unconsciousness meaning that patient had the fluid in the mouth patient have no control over the airway airway reflexes so patient might aspirate. This is what gonna kill the patient. So this is why uh, in a patient with seizure or generalized seizure, it's much of emergency because the issue with the airway and breathing, you know, patient may just die because they stop breathing. That's why status epilepticus is dangerous because if patient stop breathing for 30 minutes, it's a problem. And the tonic clonic movement doesn't help because generalized tonic clonic movement too consumes a lot of energy. So patient punya oxygen demand is increased. So if you've got a patient who's stopped breathing, also at the same time is having increased oxygen demand. So not a good combination. This is why tonic clonic seizure is considered an emergency. Okay, so yes, your management in general is correct. Tapi if a patient suddenly have a seizure in front of you, this is not something that you should do. So you need to prioritize your management. So the priority in patient who, if, if patient, if suddenly a patient have a seizure in front of you, can generalize tonic clonic seizure in front of you, or you, I don't know, in college ke, your roommate ke, hopefully not lah, your roommate had a seizure ke, apa ke, mana you nak tahu TDM, apa, mana you nak check, uh, phenytoin level ke, apa ke, you nak bagi medication, I mean, I, I don't think any one of you keep phenytoin at home IV. So your priority is to resuscitate the patient in terms of airway, breathing, circulation okay you need to ensure that patient's airway is patent patient's breathing is not compromised uh so say a patient had a seizure in front of you your priority is to ensure that airway is patent so what you need to do is to put patient in recovery position so that do you guys know what a recovery position Hello? Ada orang ke? Ada orang ke? Hello? Dengar tak? 
Yes, doctor. Uh, we can. Uh, uh, so recovery position. Does anyone know about recovery position? Tada. So recovery position. I mean, you can Google it up lah. Essentially, is putting the patient on their side. Because patient seizure usually they most of the time they fell forward lah. Okay. So or backwards, but. What you need to do to ensure that the airway is not compromised is put patient in recovery position, because when you put the patient on their side in recovery position, if they were the uh, foaming of the mouth, saliva, it will dribble down the side of their mouth rather than go tracking back into their throat. And uh, I don't know if you have experienced seizure before, because when I was younger, when people have a seizure, people always say put a spoon in their mouth to prevent them from biting their teeth or biting their tongue or whatever. Please don't do that. Avoid putting anything in patient punya mouth if the patient is having a seizure. You don't need to put anything. Don't struggle to put a spoon ke apa ke in their mouth. This is all myth, jenis. You may be causing more danger. Huh? So just put patient in a recovery position. However, if the patient is in hospital or patient is brought to hospital, your priority is still the same. You need to ensure the airway and breathing is patent. Of course, satu lagi, the danger if if patient have a seizure dekat public area apa semua, because they lost consciousness, they might fall onto a near a uh, table ke something sharp corner ke or you know they are in an area where it's dangerous so you need to remove the danger first lah katalah dia kat kitchen tengah potong sayur ke apa and then had a seizure obviously remove the knife lah okay something like that okay so your first priority is ensure that the airway is patent and patient is not going to aspirate that's your first priority so once the patient in hospital, the next thing you need to do is your next priority is to abort the seizure. So there are the algorithm there. I'm not sure whether you're gonna show us the algorithm or not, but there are the algorithm and it's step by step time based punya algorithm for seizures. So that your once you ensure that patient's airway and breathing is stable then the next next priority is to stop or to abort the seizure so the first line drug to abort seizure is benzodiazepine you guys aware of benzodiazepine it's a group of drug lah you know your uh diazepam lorazepam midazolam semua ni adalah Benzodiazepine. It's a sedative. Okay, your first line is sedative lah. Typically in Malaysian hospital, it's diazepam or Valium. You give 10 mg stat. In most cases, 80 to 90 percent of cases that should abort the seizure. Okay. However, in the rare case where it doesn't. You can give another dose, another 10 milligrams of diazepam. Okay. If within five minutes after given diazepam, the seizure haven't stopped, then you need to load the patient with phenytoin. This is where your 20 mg per kg of IV phenytoin. Lah. Okay. So <clears throat> It here it specifically mentioned a rate of 25 mg per minute however the main thing is you cannot go any faster than 25 mg per minute you can go slower but you can't go any faster because going faster you may cause arrhythmia phenytoin one of the side effects of phenytoin it can cause arrhythmia in patient so you you can't go any faster than 25 mg per minute you can go slower, but in the case of, in the case of status epitheticus where your aim is to abort the seizure, you want to give phenytoin lah. Okay. If the seizure didn't stop with phenytoin loading, now you're looking at third line. By this time, 
this patient, you need to definitively secure the patient's airway. This is where your intubation comes in. Then you need to start giving uh, more sort of potent uh, medication, lah, such as propofol or ketamine or phenobarbitone. Depends on what's available. So this is the guideline. Lah. Okay, lorazepam, we don't have it here in Malaysia. It's not, uh, it's just not in Malaysian hospital. Lah. They, 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 they've got lorazepam tablets in psychiatry, but kalau IV lorazepam memang tak ada lah. So far, I've worked in HKL, I've worked in Kota Baru, I've worked here, I've worked in Penang. No IV lorazepam lah. If you ask neurologists, they'll recommend lorazepam over diazepam. But it, it's just not here lah. We, we just don't have it around. Okay, so... But uh, in the patient present seizure, ensure airway is okay, breathing is okay, put patient on oxygen, then give diazepam, 10 mg. Don't give 5 mg, just 10, because 5 mg is underdose. You want to abort the seizure, so you want to give the appropriate dose to start with. You do it's not something that you just oh first give 5 mg, then mungkin tak cukup another 5 mg. No, give 10 mg. It's not gonna work if you just give 5 mg. And then another 5 mg, you have to literally abort the seizure. Okay. This ni from Tintinali kan? Yeah. This, ha, okay. So, tak tak cari yang Malaysian yang CPG? No, doctor. It's quite similar lah sebenarnya. Uh, cuma dalam Malaysia punya CPG, the level tiracetam, Kepra ni, it's not actually completely licensed lah for management of seizure. I know it's very popular with the neurologist, but IV levetiracetam, Kepra ni, is not actually licensed or uh, validated for treatment of acute seizure. It's it's uh, it's it's good for control of epilepsy apa semua, but it's not uh validated lah so some some guidelines may not have levetiracetam kepra okay tapi itulah the issue the main issue is airway sebenarnya with regards to status epilepticus or generalized seizure that's what's going to kill the patient immediately bukanlah immediately that's what going to kill the patient quicker lah rather than the seizure. The seizure itself may consume a lot of energy. Lah. That's why uh, after a seizure, patient had a post-ictal drowsiness, had a post-ictal state because in that one or two minutes they're having a seizure, it's like they're running a marathon. Lah. So that's why, uh, then that's why the other complications of status epilepticus is, uh, what do you call it? Um, apa dah? Uh, rhabdomyolysis, muscle breakdown dan sebagainya. Because, you know, the muscles, your muscles and everything is being worked to the extreme. Okay, that's why, that's another reason why you want to abort. To, to your your aim is to abort the seizure as quickly as possible. Okay, carry on. Uh. Okay, for the, for the fourth, we admit. Okay. Oh. For the fourth, we administer intravenous magnesium sulfate to patient with suspected okay. uh, eclampsia. Okay. Let's let's um. Let's not get yourself confused, lah. Seizure in pregnancy is a whole different topic altogether. There should be a specific CME lah for seizure in pregnancy. Jangan campur dengan just seizure yang biasa. So, seizure in pregnancy is eclampsia lah. You know, whenever you talk about seizure in pregnancy, things that you should talk, you should come into your head is eclampsia. And the management is is a whole other thing lah. It's a whole other lecture lah. Jangan campur dengan seizure biasa. Just... So just forget this number four ni. 
betul you give magnesium sulfate tapi it's not as simple as bagi magnesium sulfate lah there's a whole other thing lah when it comes to seizure in pregnancy probably another topic altogether you can just get confused just ignore it okay number five uh, okay this is the okay carry on a uh, patient in status a uh, patient with <laughs> patient in status epilepticus should have IV access, cardiac mo- monitoring and pulse oximetry. Endotracheal intubations may be required if a patient if a paralytic agent is used, a short acting drug is preferred as that any ongoing seizure activity can be monitored. Otherwise, EE. Uh, huh? What do you understand by if a paralytic agent is used, a short acting drug is preferred so that any ongoing seizure activity can be monitored? Because if we op- apply the paralytic agents, so the muscle did not jerking anymore. Okay. So uh, we cannot observe where when the seizure end. Okay, so just because a paralytic agent causes stop the muscle twitching, doesn't mean that it stops the seizure. It may make make you feel happy lah. Oh, patient stop twitching. Oh, I'm happy lah. But the seizure might still be ongoing. So. So be careful when you're using paralytic agent lah. This is basically the ICU lah. So, agree lah. EEG monitor, monitoring should be initiated lah in patient that you suspect is having ongoing seizure. Okay, just go to the next slide lah. This one is the same thing that we'll be discussing. Okay, a uh, patient with a se- first seizure who have a normal neuro- neurologic examinations, no acute or chronic medical comorbidities, normal diagnostic testing including neuroimaging and a ne- normal mental status uh, can be discharged from the ED with appropriate recommendations for outpatient follow-ups, initiations of anti epileptic medications, brand MRIs, and other additional testing may be deferred to the uh, outpatient set- settings. So, patient who presented with first episode of seizure, that emergency, doesn't necessarily need admission. You need to ensure that the bloods are normal, no neurological deficit, the CT is normal, then the patient can be discharged and followed up as outpatient. For all we know, that might be the one and only time patient had a seizure because it may be related to, you know, physical exhaustion, maybe related to drugs or alcohol or any any other factors. But you need to ensure that the bloods are normal, you know, electrolytes normal and everything, no neurological deficit, and the imaging is normal. Lah. There's no a big brain tumor ke apa ke. And patient is usually quite safe to be discharged and followed up as outpatient. And it's even it's not even necessary to start anti-epileptic on the first seizure. Okay, this is what you need to understand. Tapi you before discharging, you need to ensure that there's no obvious organic abnormality lah. You know, there's no bleed in the brain, there's no tumor and whatnot. If you can't do that, then the patient needs to be admitted for further workup before be able to be safely discharged. Okay. <clears throat> Number seven. Instruct discharge patient to take precautions that minimize the risk for injury from further seizure. Swim- swimming, working with hazard tools or machines, and working at height should be <coughs> prohibited. Patients should not drive ve- vehicle are they clear by a neurologist or primary care physicians and driving privilege uh, should conform to state law. Okay. Unfortunately, when seizure ni is unpredictable, there's no way for you to really predict when you're going to have a seizure. Even if you say you always have an aura before a seizure, the aura do usually 
a few seconds preceding the seizure and it might not be enough time for you to stop doing whatever you're doing say you're swimming in the middle of the atlantic and oh you've got an aura and uh, it's not enough time for you to go to the beach lah and you're probably just gonna have a seizure and drown and die lah okay that's why swimming working with hasn't this tool or machine or working at height is prohibited in patient who has uncontrolled seizure because it's just dangerous lah, you know, you're working on top of KLCC, fixing whatever antenna ke apa, then you had a seizure. That's a long way lah to fall. Probably the happy seizure or oh, still falling. But anyway, um, <clears throat> with regards to driving, memang they cannot drive until the seizure is well controlled. Unfortunately, kat Malaysia, we can only tell them to drive. But we don't actually have a law or requirement to report oh this patient is having seizures report kat jpj so that their license may be revoked or whatnot we can just tell patient lah hey you have seizure but cheat you have a seizure you shouldn't drive a car because it's very dangerous you might have a seizure while you're driving and hit somebody but she cakap okay tu pak cik balik dengan kereta dia sendiri kan so there's no law in Malaysia to prevent patient with seizure to drive. It's different in other states lah. In the UK, you are legally required as a doctor to report a patient who has uncontrolled seizure to the their, macam their equivalent of JPJ lah. Then the JPJ will take action by revoking the license and whatnot and patient needs to be fit free for two years before they can drive again or before they can get a license again. So that one is a legal requirement. You don't report, you're breaking the law and you boleh kena tangkap dan sebagainya lah. In Malaysia, unfortunately, you can advise the patient. Hey, you have a seizure, not very controlled. Don't work with hazardous tool or machines or working heights or, you know, don't drive. Or whatever. Tapi, you know, your patient never listens to you lah. That's why we have so many instances of patient with uncontrolled seizure, jatuh motor, langgar orang dengan kereta dan sebagainya. It's an unfortunate. Hopefully, this will be changed lah. But, yes. Seizure. <coughs> okay, carry on. Uh, this is the diagram shows the guidelines for the management of active, active seizures and status epilepticus. For the active seizures, we uh, give the supportive care like IVSS, monitor, maintain airway, oxygen, checkpoint of care glucose and provide intravenous glucose if indicated and then uh, patient protection. <coughs> to establish the status epilepticus treatments, the goal is within uh, 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, we give intravenous lorazepams two milligrams up to 0 0.1 milligram per kg or intravenous tizer pumps, 10 to 20 milligrams, plus one of the following intravenous phosphinitons, 20 PE per kg at uh, 150 milligram per minute or intravenous phenitons, 20 milligram per kg at uh, 50 milligram per minute or intra uh, this uh, can skip and then uh, consider intubations and for the refractory status epilepti epilepticus treatment the goal is within 30 minutes and then we give intravenous midazolam load with 0 0.2 milligram per kg then infusions of uh, 0 0.05 to 2 milligram per kg per hours or intravenous propofol uh, 1 milligram per kg intravenous then uh, 1 to 10 milligram per kg per hour or ketamine 5 milligram per kg per hour or intravenous phenobarbital uh, 20 milligram per kg at 50 to 75 milligram per minute. We can consider to intubate the patient, neural ICU admissions or continue and continue EEG monitoring. Okay, so this is what I meant by the sort of the time-based punya management lah. So the first five minutes, what you need to do, the first five to ten minutes, what you need to do, and then the rest lah. Okay, 
So 99% of the time, usually it will end at the 5-10 minutes part lah. Very rarely you will have seizures that last up to the third part tu lah. And usually it's going to be fairly, bukan lah traumatizing but banyak kerja lah. Okay, carry on. Okay. Any questions about seizure? <clears throat> Conclusion. So anyway, so <clears throat> uh, with regards to seizure, the priority is always uh, maintaining the airway, ensure patient's breathing, airway and breathing is not compromised, then the next priority is to abort the seizure. Lah. You probably need to remember a few of the drugs. Lah. Of course, diazepam, first line, penetoin, second line, then third line to intubation and propofol. You don't have to remember all the drugs. Just remember the common ones. Lah. Diaz benzodiazepine, diazepam, olorazepam, phenytoin, phenobabs or propofol. Lah. Okay, so just remember the management is always in stages. Lah. The first priority is always ensuring that the patient is safe. There's no danger around, there's no knife, no sharp objects or no current electricity ke, apa ke, you know, around this area where the patient has is having the seizure because because you don't really know where the patient's, you know, where, where is the patient going to have seizure again. Then the next area is uh to uh, the prior next priority is to abort the seizure and the first line drug is always benzodiazepine lah. either lorazepam or diazepam huh? whichever one that you prefer to remember lah. okay and then second line is phenytoin 20 mg per kg iv loading yeah so uh and remember the rate why you can't go too fast on phenytoin and dan sebagainya and then subsequently bila dah refractory seizure tu uh, you need to consider intubation and giving more potent sedative lah such as propofol dan sebagainya and then of course to look for why patients having a seizure lah usually it's imaging dan sebagainya so seizure ni banyak it's a big topic and if you ask neurologist yes like you said lah banyak classification semua tapi for sort of emergency at emergency punya emergency punya concern we're really concerned about uh, <coughs> generalized seizure because it has inherent dangers lah okay any questions 